Moving on, I want to introduce the term indeterminate. The indeterminate patients of left ventricular filling pressure, so diastolic dysfunction, was introduced in the 2016 guidelines of the societies of echocardiography, where there was a differentiation in healthy left ventricles and sick left ventricles and the resulting diastolic dysfunction. Now let's have a look at the first graph of these guidelines. You see now that patients with normal left ventricular function or normal left ventricular ejection fraction have several parameters you have to acquire to determine if they have a normal diastolic dysfunction or a diastolic dysfunction or if it is indeterminate, which simply means we do not know. You have the average E to E' prime ratio, you have the septal E' prime velocity and the lateral E' prime velocity or one of them. You have the TR velocity and the left atrial volume index. If more than two, so more than 50% are positive, you can say that patients with normal left ventricular ejection fraction have diastolic dysfunction. If only one is positive and three are negative, so for example, the average E to E prime velocity is 16, but the lateral E prime velocity is 11, the TR velocity is 2.6, and the LA volume index is 30 milliliters per square meter, you have a normal diastolic function. And if two are positive and two are negative, it is indeterminate. Now we take an example where you can use the first chart we have seen in healthy left ventricles, this is a normal left ventricle with normal systolic function, so normal ejection fraction, it might be in the range of 55 to 60%. You do see that this must be a relatively young patient, the valves, the mitral valve and the tricuspid valve, they look normal. You see that the walls of the heart are not thick and there are no regional wall motion abnormalities and there is no left ventricular dilatation. Well, it is different now in patients who have sick left ventricles, then the column or how you interpret diastolic dysfunction even becomes more complicated. So first of all, we have to see the mitral inflow. If you see the mitral inflow, you always have an E to A ratio. And depending on how this E to A ratio is, you go either to the left side or to the right side, or you stick to the middle. We will go into detail of this chart soon, but overall keep in mind that there is a diastolic dysfunction grade 1, where you can say that the left atrial filling pressures are normal, the diastolic dysfunction grade 3, where the filling pressures are definitely elevated, and that there are two more differentiations, the patients we simply cannot determine, so we do not know if their filling pressures are elevated or not, and the grade 2 diastolic dysfunction, but we also can assume that filling pressures are elevated. Before we dig deeper into this topic, I want to show you possibilities when the left ventricle is sick. Here you have several examples. The first one on the left hand side, you can see that there is a regional problem, the apical regions, there is a wall motion abnormality. This is a patient with an infarct, so an LED problem and of course in reduced ejection fraction and this patient has a reduction in ejection fraction even though the basal segments are even a bit hypercontractile, we have diastolic dysfunction. On the right hand side in this slide we do see another possibility where we have probably normal left ventricular ejection fraction but we have to determine filling pressures. Also in this case the left ventricle is sick so the diastolic function cannot be normal, but there has to be diastolic dysfunction. We just have to figure out if the filling pressures are elevated or if they are not elevated. More examples of sick left ventricles are seen in this case. You have here a dilated left ventricle. You also see a dilated left atrium. You see a reduction in opening of the mitral valve and definitely a reduction in left ventricular function. You do see wall motion abnormalities of the septal region and the apical regions. On the right hand side you have another example of a definitely sick left ventricle. This is a patient with amyloidosis, amyloid heart disease. You see a reduction in left ventricular ejection fraction, but you also see that the myocardium is significantly thickened. 
Also the left atrium, if you take a look at the left atrium, it's also dilated.